So for A, the strategy that I'm going to use here is to get a common denominator. So if I look at all the fractions that I have in part A, I've got a 2x in the denominator, 5, and a 10x. Can you see that the common denominator between the three of them will be 10x? So the first one, you're going to need to multiply by 5 and 5. The second one, you're going to need to multiply by 2x and 2x. And the third one already has a 10x. So now if I rewrite things, I'm going to have 5 over 10x minus 4x over 10x equals 1 over 10x. Once you have all three of them with a common denominator, you can get rid of your fractions. Technically, you can get rid of all three of those because you could multiply both sides by 10x. And when you do that, all of your denominators will go away. I will be OK if you just, once you got all three of them, if you know that that goes away. OK? And then what are we left with? We're just left with 5 minus 4x equals 1. We have some like terms, so I'm going to subtract 5 on both sides put those like terms together, divide both sides by negative 4, and we get x is equal to 1. We have to check if this is an extraneous root. The way that we check if it's an extraneous root is we look at our original equation and see what are our non-permissible values. Are, is there anything that x can't equal? Is there anything that would make us divide by 0? x can equal 0, because if x is 0, then we'd be dividing by 0. And that's the only non-permissible value. So because our answer is x equals 1, that's fine. You don't have to plug it in. You can plug it in if you'd like to check it. But if you just check your non-permissible values to see if it's different, then you'll know you'll be fine. So this is using the strategy of getting a common denominator. For part B, part B, the strategy that we're going to use is the one where we multiplied to get rid of fractions. So instead of getting a common denominator first, we're going to multiply to get rid of fractions. Now, we have two fractions here. One fraction has an x on the bottom. The other one has an x squared on the bottom. You can choose either fraction to get rid of it, get rid of the denominator. I like to choose the bigger one first, because sometimes it gets rid of both of them. But you don't have to use the bigger one first. So if I'm looking at these, I would probably say, well, x squared is bigger than x. It has more things than just x. So I would start by multiplying everything by x squared. Now, one thing that I've shown so far is when I multiply this side by x squared, I have to multiply this whole side by x squared. And I put brackets around it and put multiply by x squared out in front. One of the things that you're going to find yourself doing in your own work is you're going to say, well, if I multiply one side by x squared, I'm going to multiply the other side by x squared. I can show that by distributing right away. Every single term will get multiplied by x squared. So you'll multiply the first one by x squared, the second one by x squared, and the other side. But that technically is just multiplying by x squared on each side once. So now what happens? Well. We wanted to get rid of the x squared, so that automatically is what's going to happen there. What happens when I multiply 5 over x times x squared? And again, if you like to think of it as fractions, it's x squared over 1. Can you see that that would give you 5x squared over x? 
can you see that those x's will cancel out as well? And you'll just be left with 5x. So we have 5x in the first one. The second one, those x squared cancel out, so we'll just have plus x, plus 6. And in the other side of the equation, 6 times x squared will give us 6x squared. So by multiplying by the larger of the one, we got rid of the, all the fractions. That doesn't always happen, but in this case it did, which was really nice. So once you've gotten rid of your fractions, we've got another equation here. What kind of equation is this? Have we seen equations like this before? It's one where we can possibly factor. How do we set that up, though? We have to subtract things to make one side equal to 0. You could either subtract 6x squared on both sides or subtract the 5x and the 6. I personally find it's easier to factor. It's easier to factor if you have the first term positive. Okay? This is a hard one to factor because you have options. The 6 is 2 and 3 or 6 and 1. And so we have more options here than and you might have to guess one to start with. <laughs> if you feel like there's too many options, what other option do you have for solving something like this? You could also use the quadratic formula. So if you felt like, ooh, I don't know if I'm going to be able to factor this one, you could go to the quadratic formula, plug all your numbers in for a, b, and c, and you'll get the right answer that way as well. So if you want to try to factor it, if you were going to try to factor it, what would you go with first? 2x and 3x or 6x and 1x? 2 and 3. So if we start with 2 and 3, is there any way to put our last numbers also have to give 6? So they're also going to be 2 and 3 or 6 and 1. Can you ever do that so you could add or subtract to get 5? What happens if I do 3 here and 2 there? See, my inside is 9, my outside is 4. Does that ever make 5? Yes. So now we're going to just check with positive and negative if it actually works out. So if I want a negative 5, so I need my 9 to be negative and my 4 to be positive. Now I'm going to check, is my last term still negative 6? Yes. Is my first one still positive 6x squared? Yes. So this did factor, and now if we solve for x, here x will equal 3 over 2, and here x will equal negative 2 over 3. We have to do a quick check to make sure none of these were non-permissible values. Looking at our original equation, we divided by x here, so x can't equal 0. Here we're dividing by x squared, so again, x can't equal 0. Our only non-permissible value is x equals 0, so both of those answers are right. Three, four, five, and 8 are questions like this that you can do now.